Hi there, Katie. I uh, hope you're doing well and hope uh, your trial prep is uh, going smoothly. I think you mentioned something last time about having uh, to, there was a possibility you might have to work late tonight or something, but um, hope everything's going smooth. Um, get your video lesson right here. Um, there are three things, three point, three point, uh, two things that I want to talk about. Um, I got your message saying that uh, you need some help with that G to D switch. I'll kind of show you some tricks that you can, that you can, chips and tricks that you can uh, do to help maybe speed that along a little bit or get better at that. Um, and then I'll show you the next bit of the song. The first thing is um, chord changing exercise. Um, this, is a, this is something that we'll work on for a while, uh, making sure that we uh, practice our chord changes and make sure they're smooth. They've gotten a whole lot better. Uh, I've been noticing that your strums have been getting a lot smoother and your transitions are getting a lot smoother. So now let's, let's refine that even more. Um, what you can do, uh, let's take the G and D as just an example. You can do this with any, any of the chords in the song, but we'll, we'll use the, the G and the D just as, um, as a spot to start. So start with the G chord. Give it a strong. And what you're going to do is you're going to lift and hold the chord. We might, we might have done this a few times. This is one of my standard chord practicing uh, techniques. Is you'll, you'll play the chord. <coughs> and then what you'll do is you'll lift the chord up in midair. And so see what I'm doing is I'm actually literally holding the shape up in midair. So I don't want to lift and kind of look at my fingers do their own thing. Lift and hold that shape like right over top of the fret. So you don't want to lift too far away. I'm going to strum the chord. I'm going to lift the fingers away. My hand is still in the back of the neck right here. Lifting and holding, lifting or holding, right? And you might want to count to 10 or something like that. It's the only thing, what'll happen is for the G chord at least, you'll see the, the fingers kind of contract with this. Try to even keep them separate like this. And then what you're gonna do is, when you hold it for a long enough amount of time, you'll drop the chord all down at the same time. So you lift, you hold it, hold it, hold it. And then at the very last moment, just see if you can drop them all at the same time. Lift and hold, and then drop them all at the same time. All right? You want to avoid the da 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 right? So you can get them all to land all at once. And remember, like I said, with any other exercise, if you could do it already, we would be doing a harder one. So I expect this one to be a bit of a challenge, making sure that they all land at the same time. That's what you should be shooting for. Um, when I practice a song like this, if I were in your shoes, I would like, you know, obviously like play through the changes, but I would do a lot of exercises and drills to strengthen my fingers. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like what you do with uh, teaching people how to like work out and like you know train them. Um, is your job is to push them right so that way they can physically do the next thing. Um, same thing here. You got to make sure to pick the chord up and see if you can land it all at the same time. Um, and then what you can do is you can do another offshoot of that, which is lift and hold and switch to the other chord in midair. That one's a lot harder. So if you if you find lift and hold is getting easy, right? Lift hold place. Then you lift, hold, switch to the D chord in midair. There you go. And drop it all down at the same time. So play, lift, hold, switch into the other D into the D chord, and then drop it all down at the same time. And that lift and hold exercise, do that with all the chords. Lift and hold it in midair. And then drop it all at the same time. Next exercise I want you to do is um, is the pivot finger. So if you switch between G and D, there is a common finger between those two chords, as you might have noticed. Um, what you want to do is you strum the G, the G chord and you lift the chord in. Uh, you lift the chord all except for the ring finger. You got to keep that guy down. And I actually, when I do this, I try to make like a big kind of like intentional motion. So because a lot of people do this, they'll, they'll strum the chord and then they'll try to drag their fingers into place, like trying to like crawl there. But I would actually go here, lift them, and intentionally place, put them in position, and then strum. So you lift the chord up, you intentionally drop them all in position. You want to do this slow too, so this is not a fast exercise. You want to do this thing slow. You lift, and intentionally place, put them in position. It's kind of like if you were to kick your foot out to the side, if you do it super fast, it's not that bad because you can momentum to get you out there. But if you intentionally put your foot out real slow and then bring it back, it takes a lot more muscle control and strength. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make your fingers stronger, um, fingers stronger for, for playing the chords. Lift slowly and then drop into position while keeping that ring finger down. them right where you want them to be and then same thing back to the G chord lift and then drop everything all at once being intentional movements so not dragging any things into position or like that big movement drop in position now we take more
more muscle control and uh, you know, finger, your fingers will get more independent and stronger. All right, and then number three is the verse in the pre-chorus of the song. Nothing too crazy here. Um, it's just that same down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. That's the strum pattern for the song. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. You want to do that repeatedly over and over and over and over again. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Go to the verse of the song, G chord times two. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. C chord. There's the verse of the song. He does that twice. It sounds like this. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Repeat. Pre chorus, more or less the same thing. It's a C times one, G times one, C times one, G times one. It's basically that twice, but I wrote it out loud for you. So. A, sne a sneaking suspicion that next week what we'll talk about is the C the C the G chord switch. So this week G uh, G to D, and then next week we'll talk more about the C chord switch and some tips and tricks I have for making that a little bit uh, more better and more faster. Like any, like as usual, if you want me to take a look at anything, you want me to, you want me to take a look at uh, anything you want to, you've been doing working on this week, feel free to send a video over. I'll give you my two cents. Or if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask me at the uh, at the end of this video. All right, I will see you same time next time. Take care.